Everyone deserves to understand why they experience life in the unique ways that they do. I want to talk about going beyond the labels that we give ourselves or that we give other people, particularly in reference to mental and physical health. The first thing I want to do is talk about the difference between a label and a diagnosis. Or another way that you can look at it is the difference between an identity and an identifier. There's a lot of different ways that we can compare the differences between the two, but for me, the biggest thing is the kind of linguistic difference in the way that the implications are laid out for each of them. To me, labels are not necessarily a bad thing. They're just kind of a more incomplete version of a diagnosis. For a lot of people, they might look at it as, I started at point A with nothing, and then I got to point B with some kind of diagnosis. And that is my label. I am autistic, or I am disabled. And while there's nothing wrong with saying those identifiers and claiming those words, because being autistic and being disabled are not bad things, disabled is not a bad word, autistic is not a bad word. The problem is that we often stop at that point and we don't think about what is beyond that label. And that kind of leads me to the word diagnosis, which I realize is more of a medical term and it's more sciencey or whatever, but it really does a much better job of fully encapsulating what it is that you're trying to say about yourself or what it is that you're trying to understand about yourself. Because unlike a label, which just goes from point A to point B, a diagnosis says, okay, I don't have anything, now I have a thing that I have a name for, and then it goes one step further, and it says, what kind of treatment options do I have? What kind of services can I get? How do I make the world accessible to me when I have this particular diagnosis? One of the ways that I've seen it come up is, parents are on the fence about whether or not they want to get their kid tested for what if he has this label stuck on him for the rest of his life and we're just not sure and my thought on it is let him get the label because then maybe he can get services maybe he can get a little bit of extra help in school maybe he can get therapy if he needs that the label is just the starting point for him to be able to understand himself and understand the world a lot better. And those parents' reaction kind of segues really well into what I want to talk about next, which is what are the things that hold us back from looking beyond those labels? There are a lot of different reasons why people have difficulty looking beyond labels, and I'm not going to go into all of them because this would be a very long video, but the two main ones that I want to address are kind of like two ends of a spectrum. On one end, you have stigma. And then on the other end, you have imposter syndrome. Stigma is essentially feeling like you're too different or being afraid that you might be too different. Whereas imposter syndrome is feeling like you're not really different enough. Notice how I use the word spectrum. That's because a lot of us feel both ends and we kind of fall somewhere in between. I know that in my own journey of getting diagnosed and getting testing and everything, there were times where I didn't feel like I was different enough. I felt like I was pretty normal, normal. And then there were also times where I was afraid that I was too different and I was ashamed of my differences and I didn't know how to handle those differences. So I'm not trying to say that people experience either stigma or imposter syndrome. I just kind of want to differentiate the two. When it comes to stigma, there's a lot of different factors. There are stereotypes, the kind of culture that we come from, religious background, and maybe one of the biggest of all, media portrayals. Like I couldn't even begin to tell you how much Hollywood really doesn't have an understanding of what disabilities look like. Now, imposter syndrome, on the other hand, is really strongly influenced by poor education. Poor education leads to ignorance, it leads to stigma, but it also leads to people not understanding themselves, not understanding why they experience things that they do. Like, for the longest time, I just 
thought I was the way that I was because I was different, but I didn't have any words, I didn't have any language to explain it to other people, or even truly understand it myself. Another big influencer for imposter syndrome is lack of validation. That's a big one that I struggled with, and I know a lot of people struggle with, because if the people around you aren't even validating your your experience and validating things that you go through, especially when they're things that you struggle with, it can be a lot easier to think, uh, maybe I'm just overthinking it. Maybe I'm not really that different. These are so, so hard to shake when you don't have people around you that are validating you and saying, yes, this is a real thing. This is something that you need to ask about or tell other people about. Another really huge factor, patriarchy and the sexism that's in the healthcare system. The degree to which women, especially women of color and trans women, aren't taken seriously in the healthcare system is not only appalling, but it's also a huge reason why so many women just think, oh, I must be overreacting when they actually have cervical cancer and they could die in a month. And it doesn't just happen with illnesses, it happens with physical disabilities, it happens with cognitive disabilities. Across the board, women are less likely to be taken seriously and therefore less likely to get a diagnosis or an answer. Which is not okay. It's not okay for people to spend their entire life knowing that there might be something about them that's different, but never being able to get an answer. And that brings me back to the point of this video. Looking beyond the label is looking for an answer because you deserve an answer. You deserve a diagnosis. I would even say you have the right to a diagnosis of some kind. Maybe even more than one diagnosis if you're in that kind of situation. I got tested for an autism spectrum disorder seven years ago, but that was just the beginning. In a few days from now, I'm going to be going into some whole new testing for some other things that might be going on. And I'm doing that because I believe I have the right to understand why my brain thinks the way that it does, why I hear things the way that I hear things, why I experience things the way that I experience things. I have the right to understand myself, and so do you. You have the right to understand why you are the way that you are. This applies to every aspect of yourself, your mental health, your cognitive abilities, your physical health, your physical abilities, all of those things you deserve to understand. If there are things that you feel just don't add up, things that you look at your life and your experiences and you say, yeah, that's different from other people. There's discrepancies in these areas. I don't think my body should do that. Or maybe you think my body should be able to do that. Why can't it? These are all valid things to ask and wonder and they're things that you deserve to be able to have answers to. If you have been struggling with the fear of all the stigmas in the world, struggling with the feeling of that imposter syndrome where you just don't feel like you're different enough, I strongly encourage you to try and look past those things and to try and look at the point of getting a diagnosis or getting a label for lack of better terms. Or if you know somebody who struggles with the stigma and the imposter syndrome stuff, I encourage you to validate them. I encourage you to help them look beyond those things. Maybe they don't have a diagnosis and they're afraid to ask questions, or they do have a diagnosis and they're afraid to talk about it. Reach out to them and let them know that their experience is valid. They deserve to understand things and they deserve to feel validated about that. Because at the end of the day, all of us deserve to understand ourselves, and that is something that no one can take away from you. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I hope you take care of yourself, and I hope you have a wonderful day.